The HMV Link project is a, an EU funded uh, project under the Horizon 2020 programme. It aims to set up a, a network of different learning areas across the EU that are high nature value, value farmland. So these are extensively farmed areas like we're situated here uh, at the moment that are essentially marginal from an agricultural point of view in terms of food production. It's quite difficult to produce high amounts of food from these areas, but they're of exceptional nature value and produce high amounts of, of public goods. So essentially under the current economic system these areas find it very difficult and very challenging to make a, a living. We have many problems in these areas with their remoteness, with declines in, in rural populations and essentially the HNV Link project through the dissemination of, of knowledge and sharing knowledge is trying to overcome these challenges in uh, 10 example uh, learning areas and spread these what we call innovations across the whole of the EU essentially to try and uh, rise the economic viability of these areas while still maintaining the environmental services that are so important to the EU citizens. My name is Oliver Nagel. Um, I live in Corrafin, County Clare. I farm this farm with my father, my wife Colette, and I have four children, Sean, Ashley, Dirden and Saoirse. It's a farm split in two. We have a lowland farm, which is in Bonkyle, Corrafin, and the winter's farm is in Pollock, Carn. For the summertime, the cows and the calves are here on the lowland farm, and some are grazing, rearing their calves. And in September, October, when the calves are sold off the cows, we move the cows to the Wintridge farm where they graze out the mountains for the winter. When I say we are bringing the cows to the mountain for the winter, it's, it's Wintridge grazing. It's an age-old tradition going back 6,000 years. We haven't changed much in the design, in what they have been doing, only that we have science behind us now with Bun Life project. What they have done is only proven what we have, what we are doing is good for the environment, it's good for the winterages, for flora and fauna. When we talk about high nature value farming, or just HNV farming, this farm is a classic example of it. Um, all around this area, this most beautiful flowers, you can see the harebells and the goldenrod and remnants of some old orchids. Um, beautiful orchid rich calcareous grassland uh, we have here. But the presence of all these species depends on farming uh, and farming systems. So Oliver and his cattle are a big part of the reason we have so many flowers here. lovely example of a species rich uh, grassland you can see all the color and you can hear the sounds as well of all the all the bees buzzing around it's fantastic uh, but it doesn't happen by accident that you get nice grasslands like this elsewhere a lot of these grasslands have been improved or fertilized and don't have the same level of species richness but here in the barn uh, the farming system is quite extensive so you do retain a lot of these different species one really interesting innovation we developed here in the barn was um, around the feeding systems for cattle so typically farmers uh, uh, during winter time harvest uh, silage, summer silage, and feed it out to the cattle during winter time. In the barn, that practice was quite common as well, but it led to an awful lot of issues around pollution. And because cattle were getting a lot of winter feed through silage, they weren't foraged in these grasslands anymore, and they became very undergrazed and became very rank and scrubby as a result. So one innovation that we developed uh, in conjunction with the farmers here is we developed a feeding system uh, specifically for the burn. So we actually took samples of the grass from right across the burn over 12 months, and we analyzed the nutritional value of each mouthful of grass that the cattle were ingesting. And we looked at the nutrient profile of that grass. And we found that during January, February and March, the cattle weren't actually getting enough nutrition from the grasslands, that they needed more. Now typically that was silage, but we developed pellets, a small concentrate feed that we could actually throw on the ground, the cattle would eat it up, and that would give them enough uh, vitamins and minerals to stimulate their stomach to actually um, forage much, much more, to eat much more of the dead grass and vegetation. And by doing that, they cleared a lot of the dead vegetation over, over the winter time and allowed the small burn flowers to pop out again each spring. So that little innovation, the new feeding system, was actually much cheaper 
uh, are certainly more competitive than the silage-based feeding system. It was better for animal health because the cattle were in better condition and they calved more easily and more regularly. And it was also hugely good for the environment because there was much less water pollution, much less weeds coming into the system and much more grazing which resulted in much more biodiversity. So a simple idea proposed by the farmers, tested by the farmers and then shared through demonstration farms uh, with other farmers has really transformed management of these grasslands and as a result we're getting more of these beautiful species rich meadows in the barn. This is a nice example of some of the work that's been done on this farm uh, in support of nature. A few years ago when I was here there was a, a lot of bushes and a muddy spring uh, and the cows are standing in the spring dunging and polluting the water and not getting much water while they're at it either so it wasn't very good for their health. Oliver and Pat decided that they'd like to um, restore the spring here so what they did was they cleared away the, 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 the scrub uh, and they built this retaining wall around the spring and then put a bar across it to stop the cattle from getting in. So now what you have is a, is a very very reliable source of fresh clean drinking water for the cattle. Uh, you also have a really nice habitat uh, for wildlife, so a lot of frogs and newts and diff different little insects are in here during the, the summertime you see them. So it's worked really, really well for nature and animal health as well. There's a lot we can do in our own capacity as farmers in this gentle land. We can take respect of it, ensure that we're doing no harm. Stock it to its full. Without the cattle on the barn, the normal people won't be able to appreciate what we have. The cattle are very, very important. So you have the cattle, you have the men, and you have the mountains. But one doesn't work without the other. We're all in it together. Well, my hope for this is we have seen across all the different 10 learning areas that we work with. We've seen huge amounts of innovation going on in these areas. We've seen local communities come together, identify the challenges that they have, but come up with solutions. Now, these solutions are only being adapted at a very small scale in many of the different areas across Europe. But my wish for the future of this would be that this would be scaled up across the whole of the EU, across all the high nature value farmland areas. Approximately 30% of the, the European Union is covered in farmland landscapes like this. So the innovations that we've seen working, we have a collection now at this stage of over 150 different types of innovation, everything from social innovations, from products and markets, to uh, advice for, for policy. And if we can actually even scale up a fraction of these incrementally, over the next policy cycle and then moving into the next policy cycle of seven years within 20 years time by 2030 moving into 2050 we will have a situation where these landscapes continue to survive continue to thrive produce the, the nature and the biodiversity that we see contribute towards uh, mitigation for, for climate change and supplying clean water and uh, regulating water quality across the whole of the, of the EU.